Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Peppa. I hope you're all well. Um, as you can see from the title, this is a book recommendation video for you. I think this is going to be the first of many because I have a lot of books to recommend. So we're going to start off with the classics because I've got a few that I really enjoyed. Um, so there's four classics plus one bonus vintage maybe book um, that I'm going to recommend to you guys today. I really hope that you check them out because they all deserve a really good read. Um, I have not finished one of them, but that's over a thousand pages. So like go easy on me guys. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe. The first one I'm going to show you is not a classic as of yet but it's one that I got to read for university and it is called Ransom by David Maloof. It's based on the Iliad and it's told from the point of view of a like, not a peasant, but like a, a worker. So, cause in the Iliad, um, it's about the battle of Troy and there's all of these like, big things going on and um, big omens and everything and it's just sort of bringing it back to earth and I really enjoyed it. It was really cool to see it from like a different perspective because this is always like all the books that you read is sort of from um, the hero's perspective but this is from a bystander's perspective so I would really recommend that because it is a quite an enjoyable book and I quite liked it and it's also by an Australian author so there's that. Okay on to my next favorite book this is a classic and oh my god don't let the size of this book fool you because it's not as scary <laughs> as it looks this is just a very compacted version I did have the full size one I bought this one um before I got the other one and I haven't read this entire one but the other one that was translated by Robin Buss is my favorite um, this translation because it was written by a French author it's good but like I prefer the Robin Buss translation so that is um, for Penguin books and this one is Collins classics so like it's still translated it's still great Cotho the Three Musketeers! It is. I, when I read this book and when I finished it, I did not know what to do with myself. Like, I remember very vividly just sitting in bed, finishing off the last few pages and being like, what do I do with my life now? Because it is just one of those books that really gets you. Um, and gets into your soul and all of that like and I thought it would be more of a love story um type thing because when you think of classics you always think of like romance and all this but this author Alexandre Dumas he just wrote it as a story like yes there is romance between the main character and this other character but the main motivation for everything that the Three Musketeers do is not love, it's literally just friendship and trust for the main character, D'Artagnan. And oh, it's just so good. He's just like, like there's one bit where he's just like, guys, we're going to England. And they're like, cool. And they like, it's just, it's all friendship and not like, for love you know, you know what I mean like it's just a really great story about friendship and how close people can be and like what good friends really are like it's, it's it's a really great book and I just really loved it it's really it gives you the really warm fuzzy feelings even though there's like fighting and stuff um but it's really easy to digest because it is in smaller chapter segments like the way he writes like the chapters are quite small so it's easy to just like pick up and read a few chapters and put it down when you're getting a bit tired of the language but highly recommend i love this book so much and it is so witty and so funny just like if you're going to pick any of these books please pick this one because it's amazing three musketeers cannot say better things about it 
And then, speaking of Alexandre Dumas, we have got The Count of Monte Cristo. This is my prized hardback. I lent my paperback to one of my friends when I never got it back, but what can you do? Um, I haven't finished reading this book, but I have seen the movie, and the movie is just as good as the book. Well, the book is better because it's great and it's huge. Like, this is a big book. And this is the Robin Bus translation, like the chapters literally start directly underneath the ending of the last chapter like it's over 1100 pages long but oh my gosh it's fantastic if you don't know what it's about it's about this guy who gets wrongfully hello um it's about this guy who gets wrongfully convicted um like he gets framed and convicted in this massive prison and it's like the first part of the book is him trying to escape and then when he finally gets free he like goes and he just like hunts down all of the people who have framed him and gets revenge and it's just so good it's also like it's another thing where there is love and romance but it's in the background it's like this guy is completely fueled by revenge and it's great like i love it and just the way again I, I love this translation because the way he's translated it it's so witty and funny in parts like you get to a serious bit and he's just like saying something and you're going I know what you did there but the characters have no idea it was like it's just great I really like it I need to finish this book because honestly anything by Dumas yes This is a very special book to me because this is the very first classic book that I actually enjoyed. And my friend got me this hardcover book for my birthday. Shout out to you, Joe. And this is the three um, Bronte sisters books, but the book that I love the most and it is my favourite love story in the entire world, is Jane Eyre. I don't know why I did not read it before. It is honestly my favourite book in the entire world. Like, oh, like it's my favourite romance. It's just so good. You have to read it. It's just... It's about a girl who is, she's an orphan and she's raised by her aunt who hates her um, and sent off to boarding school and where she gets mistreated and she ends up, like she's got this really awful life going on for her and she still finds happiness in it. And then she gets a job as a governess for this guy and she starts falling in love with him, but um, he's like high status and she is just, peasant status about her and oh it's just a fantastic book and it's I just love it so much like it is honestly it makes me so happy to read it I would reread this all the time I started rereading it I got myself a um, paperback so I could carry it around because I don't want to wreck this book um also in this particular publication this also has Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey. Wuthering Heights I've read and I personally don't think it's as good as Jane Eyre because I feel like the story just ends halfway through and you're just going on. Like I get the point of it, but I didn't really enjoy like that I enjoyed the first half of the book, but I'm not going to say anything else in case anybody's reading it. But like, after that, it's just like, what's the point? Um, then there's Agnes Grey as well, by Anne Bronte and Anne Bronte. No one really knows about Anne Bronte, but I think she's fantastic in the little bit that I've read. Like, I've read a little bit of her book. I need, like I said, I do need to get back into reading and this is hopefully going to kick off my motivation and I'll get back into reading and get back to you with some really great reviews but um Agnes Grey is also a fantastic writer and Agnes Grey 
Now, Anne Bronte is also a fantastic writer. Um, Wuthering Heights is the only book written by Emily Bronte, but the other two Bronte sisters actually published more books. But if yeah, I had to pick one, absolutely Jane Eyre, because Jane Eyre is... I need to slow down when I'm talking, otherwise I will... Finally, the last book that I'm going to talk to you about is a gothic one and I really liked it like it was really well written and it's written differently to how most books are written this is written as though it's a scrapbook of letters and newspaper articles and um like documentation and all of this so it's a whole different style of writing every time you change chapter and it's really interesting because the author is obviously the one who's writing it and he has to keep switching his style every time he writes a new chapter which I think was so cool um but yeah my favorite book this book my last book that I'm going to recommend to you other than Frankenstein I recommend you go see read Frankenstein if you haven't read, read Frankenstein that is a fantastic book as well um but are you ready my friends got this for me for Christmas last year and I love it I have two hard copies of this book because it's amazing Dracula I love this book like if you know any, like if you are into vampire movies and stuff, read Dracula because it's amazing. And it's very different to how vampire like genre is portrayed today. Like there's a lot of the, you know, the myth and like the normal things about vampires and all that. Um, it's actually a little bit different and like vampires versus werewolves and all of that very different but good different um so like i said this is start of red like it's written as though it's just being compiled because i think if i'm not mistaken um uh, this is supposed to be like a compilation of the wife's um like the wife compiled all of the letters and correspondence and all of that um into look, one scrapbook i think um uh, i haven't read it in a while but yeah it's like supposed to be all compiled down into like a big book of what happened just to account for everything that went on um but this is written so this is in his journal it's got like journal diary entries letters from people to other people it's got um, doctor's entries into like for different patients and things it's really cool um, I really love this book and my favorite part of the book so also you should go watch Dracula on Netflix because that three episode series but um, yeah this book my absolute favorite part of the book have i found it in here yes i always have it right in the right page but this is chapter seven and it's the cutting from the daily graph on the 8th of august pasted in mina murray's journal i'm not going to read it to you because you need to read it for yourself but it is basically recounting this huge storm that smashes the ship up to shore when Dracula comes to England. And it just, the description makes you feel like it's happening then. It is a great book and I really loved it. The ending kind of shocked me as well, but yeah dracula so 
I think that's it. Um, they are my five book four classics and five book rent recommendations to you guys. Um, hopefully you found something that you liked. They're all quite different, but I enjoyed them all a lot. Uh, I love them for different reasons. They are just really fantastic books and I really highly recommend that you read them if you want to get into classics. Um, it's a great um, starting point. Yeah, I love all of these books so much and I really would love to have conversations with people who have read them and like talk about what your opinions are. So yeah, comment below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, if you had to read them in school or if you read them willingly. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next week with, I have a plan, with your homemade three ingredient face scrub. Yes, I've made a commitment and it's gonna happen because I've already started making it. So if you wanna see my next video, stay tuned. Bye guys.